Many new religious movements make bold claims about the end of the world. Most of these claims fizzle out when the big day arrives and nothing happens. But for the four groups I want to talk about today, the world really did end. Once again, the content of today's video is extremely gruesome, so maybe just don't watch it. Go and have a cup of tea. Call your mum. Walk your dog. People's Temple Agricultural Project was better known as Jonestown, after its founder and leader Jim Jones. It was a remote commune in northwestern Guyana, populated by more than 900 Americans. Members were enticed to Guyana by Jones, who promised them a peaceful utopia, a socialist, integrated Eden where they would be safe from inevitable nuclear warfare. Jones's ideology was complex. On one hand, he rejected the Bible as a tool used to oppress women and people of colour, and on the other hand, he claimed to be the reincarnation of Jesus, Buddha, Lenin, Gandhi, and the Reverend Father Divine. After the move to Guyana, Jones became increasingly paranoid and was said to be abusing a variety of drugs, including LSD. His physical and mental health deteriorated rapidly and his behaviour turned irrational and abusive. On one occasion, he made all his followers line up and drink a small glass of red cordial, telling them it was poison and they'd be dead within 45 minutes. Everyone obeyed, but they were later told that it had just been a test of their loyalty. In November 1978, US Congressman Leo Ryan and five others were assassinated at a Guyana airstrip after visiting Jonestown and learning that some members wished to defect. That evening, Jones gathered his 908 followers, many of them babies and children, and instructed them to commit what he called revolutionary suicide, ingesting grape flavour aid, not Kool-Aid, laced with cyanide. There were only a handful of survivors. It was the largest loss of American civilians until the 9-11 terrorist attacks. The Branch Davidians began in 1955 as a breakaway sect of Seventh-day Adventism. They moved to a commune in Waco, Texas to prepare for Armageddon, which they believed was coming in 1959. In 1989, after a leadership squabble which involved a corpse resurrection contest, an armed shootout and some axe murdering, Vernon Howell took control of the group, changing his name to David Koresh. David to symbolise his descent from Biblical King David, and Koresh being the Persian name of Cyrus the Great, a king who was considered a messiah. In a shockingly predictable move, Koresh declared himself the second coming of Christ, claiming that he had been ordered by God to procreate with all of the women in the group. Just him. All the other men had to be celibate. According to a series of articles in the Waco Tribune Herald, Koresh had dozens of wives, some as young as 10. Claims of physical and sexual abuse were rife. The Davidians were also suspected of stockpiling illegal weapons, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, or ATF, was called in to investigate. This resulted in a raid in February 1993. A shootout followed where four ATF agents and five Davidians were killed. After this, the Davidians withdrew into their compound and the FBI arrived to take control of the situation. The following siege lasted 51 days, during which time the FBI successfully negotiated the release of 21 children, although 23 others, many fathered by Koresh, remained in the compound. Outside, the FBI were resorting to increasingly aggressive techniques to end the siege, including playing loud recordings of pop music, jet planes, and the screams of rabbits being slaughtered in order to prevent the Davidians from sleeping. They cut off water and power to the compound. There has been much criticism of both the ATF and the FBI for their handling of this event, many claiming that these attacks only served to solidify Koresh's conviction that they were experiencing an end-of-days apocalyptic confrontation. On April 19, the FBI started pumping tear gas into the compound. Around noon, three fires broke out simultaneously. It's unclear as to whether these fires were started by the Davidians, the FBI, or whether they were just accidentally caused by the assault. Nine Davidians escaped, but 80 were killed, including Koresh, who was fatally shot by his top aide. The Order of the Solar Temple is a secret society inspired by the Knights Templar. Is it still a secret society if you have a Wikipedia page? Founded in Geneva in 1984 by Joseph de Mambro and Luc Jure, the order was also inspired by occultist Aleister Crowley, the Freemasons, UFOs, and various forms of New Age philosophy. Their primary goal was to unify all Christian churches and Islam in order to prepare for the second coming of Christ, who would appear as a solar god king. It was very Dan Brownie, robes, altars, swords, rituals. 
In October 1994, a three-month-old baby was stabbed to death with a wooden stake because he was believed to be the Antichrist. His parents, order members themselves, were also murdered. A few days later, DiMambro and 12 followers took part in a Last Supper ritual. A few days after that, police were called to two order temples after remote-controlled devices ignited fires within. In a secret underground chapel, police discovered more than 50 dead order members laid out in a circle wearing their robes. Most had been shot or poisoned, and they all wore plastic bags over their heads as a symbol of the impending ecological doom that they believed was the fate of humanity. In December 1995, 16 more bodies were discovered laid out in a star formation in a temple in France. In 1997, five order members took their lives in a house in Quebec. Heaven's Gate was founded in the 1970s by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles, after Nettles told Applewhite that aliens had told her that he was the second coming of Christ. Their beliefs were a combination of Christian esoterica, our old friend the Book of Revelation, and UFOs. They held meetings where they claimed to be representatives of an alien race looking for crew to participate in an experiment that would help them reach a higher level of evolution. Applewhite and Nettles claimed that the Earth was going to be recycled, and the only way humans could survive was if they left. They persuaded their members to abandon their human bodies, which they considered to be mere vessels referred to as vehicles. This process, going to the next level, involved giving up all human attachments. Members had to renounce family, career, sex, money, and possessions. Eight of the male members of the group, including Applewhite, chose to be castrated in order to fully commit to the next level. In March 1997, Applewhite announced that an alien spacecraft was trailing the Haley Bob comet and that all members must abandon their human vehicles in order to be transported on board. On March 26, 39 members were found dead, poisoned and asphyxiated. Each was lying in their bunk beds, identically dressed in black, brand new Nike sneakers and an armband reading Heaven's Gate Away Team. Everyone had in their pocket a $5 bill and three quarters, thought to be the admission fee for the alien spacecraft. Well, that was depressing. But, you know, I did come across some good news stories in my research. So next week, for my final episode, I'm going to talk about how Twitter, Words with Friends and the movie Clueless helped a young woman turn away from a lifetime of brainwashing and hatred. I'm also going to talk a bit about The Battle of Sublime, which is coming out really soon. References for this week's episode can be found down there. And if you want to know more about my book, you can click here. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.